Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. Welcome to another episode of The Honorables here on Imam Hussein TV. Today we send our condolences to you all watching and to the Imam of our time. May Allah hasten his reappearance on the demise of the great personality Ummul Banin alayhi salam. Um, I have with me today my lovely co host, Sister Sayyida Mahdiya. Thank you for joining me. You're most welcome. So, <coughs> Umul Bini needs absolutely no introduction. Um, there is so much that we can learn from her, such an illustrious life, so many lessons to be taken, but we'll try and break it up a little bit and maybe just share a tiny bit of what we know with, with our viewers mm -hmm. today. So Umul Bini, we know that she was the wife of Mam Ali alayhi salam, um, but more famously, she's probably known as the mother of Abul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. And it's quite an interesting way that she became a part of the Ahlul Bayt, the way that she got married to Imam Ali. Um, so how did she become part of this family? I mean, if you look at Umul Banin, we, if you look at Bibi Umul Banin, let's go back first. Yeah. She originally, her name was Fatima. Yeah. Fatima bint the Hizam. Yeah. And she was from the Banu Kilab yeah. tribe. Yeah. Now this was a very this was a tribe known at that time to be very strong, yeah. very courageous tribe. So Imam Ali alayhi salam, after the tragic shahadat of Sayyidina Fatima salamullahi yeah. alayha, he consulted his brother Akil. Yeah. And he wanted he wanted to marry somebody who was known for courage, yeah. who was known for bravery. And in turn, they would have brave children. Yeah. And so Akil, his brother at that time, knew very well about the genealogy, the, the, the family roots, the history of the mm -hmm. Arab community at that time. Yeah. And so he actually suggested Fatima bint Hizam or Umul yeah. Banin, as she's known as the mother of the four sons. Yeah. And um, so this is how uh, Bibi Umul Banin and Imam Ali alayhi salam got married and they had the, the four sons that we know of. We know of Hazrat Abbas yeah. but we also know of um, Abdullah, Ja'far and Uthman who were all yeah. present in Karbala yeah. and who all were made shaheed and they all gave their lives for the sake of Imam yeah. Hussain and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now she, uh, there's famous narrations that tell us that she, although her original name was Fatima, she had said to Imam Ali to to change my name yeah. because she didn't want the children of Fatima. And remember at this age, you know, Hassanayn alayhi yeah. salam, say the Zainab, say the Umm Kulthum were very young. Yeah. Um, and she didn't want her, the young children of say the Fatima salamu alayhi yeah. to uh, feel sad yeah. when they heard the name Fatima. Yeah. So this is why her name got changed yeah. to Umul Banin, mother of four sons. Yeah. Um, that's it's such a huge thing isn't it a yes. name an identity and I was thinking about this earlier today that you know we hear year in year out that Umul Benin you know she gave she she gave up her name Fatima to be called Umul Benin mm. and for me personally for a long time I just thought okay that's just a name yes. but actually given what she had done for that household it's a big deal because I'll give you an analogy. If if you and I were like sat in a lecture hall in the audience, and there were lots and lots of people near us, and say there was like a register of attendance or something, and someone pronounced our name wrong or got yes. our names wrong, we wouldn't really give it two thoughts because we think, oh well, no one knows me here, whatever. Like I'm just sitting in the audience. But if you were giving the actual talk in that lecture hall and you were on the stage, and you'd researched and you'd made a presentation, and then the person introducing you got your name wrong you'd probably correct them and say, actually, this is my name. Because you think, well, I've put in so much work and I've done this and I've done that and I'm presenting, like, they well, should, should know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And Umul she she went into her household, she served and served and served the Ahlul Bayt and, and the children of Fatima Zahra. She had four sons who she knew were going to be sacrificed. And then uh, to know all that and to do all that and to give up all that, and then to say, well, actually, my name doesn't matter very much. That's that's a big deal. 
And yes. the beautiful thing is that we all know her now as Umul Benin, and she she's far from unknown. She's far from forgotten. Um, because that's she, a gift from Allah exactly. Subhanahu wa Taala to her because she ultimately served in yeah. that household. She served. Yes, she was the wife yeah. of Imam Ali alayhi salam. But she ultimately was a servant she of really Sayyidah was. Fatima really was. Salamullahi alayha. And she actually was very, she kept that message very yeah. much alive in her children, especially yeah. we know the Hazrat Abbas, she would tell her son, don't call Hussein by his name. Yeah. He's not your brother, yeah. he is your master. master. Yeah. Treat him like that. And the love and respect that she gave yeah. Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi alayha's children, yeah. Um, the love and the loyalty that we see, yeah. um, you know, giving up four sons, making them shaheed at an adolescent age, it's not yeah. an easy task. Not at all. But for Ummul Banin, she, the way she did this yeah. with such, it was it was such a focal point, wasn't yes, it, for her? And for her, it was nothing. Yeah, she was giving up her children for Hussein because yeah. Hussein was her beloved. Yeah. And so she gave them up for Hussein. For her, that was nothing. Making yeah. for, and I think the narrations tell us. So she said, had she had more sons, she would have made more sons yeah. shaheed. Yeah. Hussein only if Hussein, his life could have been spared. Yeah, absolutely. Just backtracking a little bit, you mentioned that um, Imam Ali consulted his brother mm. Aqil when he was looking for a wife. Wife. Yeah. And we know that after Fatima, so Lady Fatima, in her will, she requested Imam Ali marries her cousin first. Um, because her children were so young at the time, mm. they needed you know, a motherly figure, a familiar face. So Imam Ali married this cousin, Fatima Zahra. And then he married Asma bint Umais, mm. who was, you know, th there's a long history of yes. who she was married yes. to, but she, he married her and adopted her son from Abu Bakr, Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr. Yes. Um, so Umul Banin came after those two. But for the others, he didn't consult Aqil. But for Umul Banin, when it came to having these four sons, mm -hmm. it was such a big deal to him mm -hmm. that they were brave and that they had these certain qualities that for this marriage, he needed to consult someone that yes. knew what they were doing. Yes. And I mean, it just goes to show how, you know, Imam Ali alayhi salam was perhaps given that foresight to say, you know, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you know, the unseen knowledge to yeah. who he wants. And Imam Ali alayhi salam, one can say perhaps that he was given that knowledge to say this is the events, the tragic events of Karbala that are going to take yeah. place. And my son Hussein will potentially, yes, be all alone. But leading up to that, he needs yeah. brave warriors. He needs loyal brothers to um, protect him. Yeah and to, to stand up to the yeah. injustice. And, and this is why yeah. he consulted his brother Akil. And mm -hmm. this is why Bibi Umul Banin um, came into the holy household. This is why the four sons yeah. were born. And we know that these four sons, particularly Hazrat Abbas, was taught archery, yeah. was taught, because you know there was an art yeah. to archery as yeah. well. And they were taught how to fight and to be brave warriors from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Yeah. Imam Ali would train, particularly Hazrat Abbas, yeah. how to fight, how to stand up, how to be courageous. Yeah. Um, and, and then we see this on the day of Ashura, and we yeah. see how he stood up to the injustice and how he ultimately gave everything that he had for the sake of Allah and for the sake of Imam Hussein yeah. alayhi salam. Definitely. So we've kind of gone to the point where, you know, Umul Benin has um, entered the family, she's had these four sons and we knew what the intention was mm -hmm. that you know she was going to sacrifice these sons and the level, like you mentioned, the level of servitude that yes. she instilled in them was beyond comprehension um, and we'll, you know, I know we're going to speak about the lessons that we take from her life later on but one example um, that I heard a while back was you would never see, you know Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, whenever he was in the presence of Imam Hussein, you would never see him like in a relaxed manner. He was always waiting for the command, waiting to see what Imam Hussein wanted, waiting yes. to serve him. And again, that was something that came from Umul Bani, and mm -hmm. she instilled this 
identity of servitude, right? Yes. And one thing that sticks out so much for me, I know we spoke about her giving up her name, but it made me think, well, if you don't have your name, then what do you have? Mm. And if anyone ever had any doubt that Umul Benin's sole identity was a servant of the Ahlul Bayt, then this is the prime example. Yes. The fact yes. that she was willing to give up her children so easily without a second thought, the fact that she was willing to give up her name, um, which is a big deal for all of us. Mm. You know, it's not easy um, to give up something like that. But it just shows us that her real identity, the identity she really resonated with was, I am the servant for this household. Yes. And that was her mission, that was her focal point, that yes. was her goal, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah. But her life and everything she did yeah. revolved around, I need to serve the Imam of my time, I need to serve this household. And actually, we can draw such a, a positive and important yeah. lesson about she, how she taught her sons to yeah. serve Imam Hussein. Yeah. And you are not the brothers, no. you are not equal, you are the servants, they are your master. Yeah. And you need to be loyal to them. You need to love them. In turn, they also respected yeah, Bibi Umul Banin alayhi yeah. and, and, and this is why we hold her so dear to our heart. Absolutely. But yes, her ultimate goal, her ultimate lesson was, I am a servant of Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu alayhi I have come into her house. Yeah. I am there to serve her and the holy household. And yeah. she, she, she resonated this amongst her children as well. And just looking at the level and respect that she has now amongst us, you know, there's a beautiful amal, the amal of Bibi Umul Banin, that um, I'm sure most of us do. And it's an amal that I often do in my life um, in times of difficulty, in times of tests and struggles. We all go through those, you know, daily, daily hurdles that we may face. Um, and it's a beautiful amal, it's a very short amal and, yeah. and perhaps you know, we can give this to our viewers um, at the end mm -hmm. um, if they want to you know, call up or email in. But it's a very short amal that I do in my life. Yeah. Um, and why do we have this? Because she was such an esteemed lady. Yeah. Bibi Umul Banin, often people ask their hajat through yeah. her. Uh, people recite latmiya yeah. in her name. Uh, she cannot have got this position without everything that Absolutely. ultimately she sacrificed yeah. for the holy household, Definitely. especially for Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu yeah. alayhi Absolutely. You know, someone said something really beautiful to me and they said, Umul Benin, she had four sons and she gave them all up for Imam Hussein. And now if you look at where she's buried, she's buried amongst four Imams. Yes. In yeah, Bakir. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, we, like I said, we've, we've got to the point where she's had, you know, she's had these four sons, we know what's going to happen to them. But where was she during um, everything that happened in Karbala yeah. and the day of Ashura and all of that? Where was Umul Benin? Because we know she was alive and we know yes. she was alive even after that. Yes. But during what was happening? So we know that Bibi Umul Benin um, was not present at Karbala. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that her role was not important. Yeah. First of all, we know that she trained her sons to be the guards, as mu as you can, if yeah. you want to put it in that way, of Imam Hussein, yeah. to give their life before to yeah. no nothing happened to Imam Hussein. So first of all, she gave up her four sons yeah. for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect Imam. Mm -hmm. But also, we know that she is such a strong figure that. Perhaps Imam Hussein, in his great knowledge, knew that she perhaps is needed in Medina. Yeah. Because, you know, we have to remember that not the whole household did not accompany no. Imam Hussein yeah. and the family to the, you know, the long journey. Yeah. We know that um, Bibi Sugra yeah. was left behind. Um, and so perhaps in her great stature, in her yeah. strength, she was a very strong woman yeah. and she was known for her strength. Um, remember, she came from the, the Banu Kilab tribe, yeah. but not just physical strength, I'm talking about st mental yeah. and emotional strength. Yeah. And so perhaps she was positioned in Medina for a reason. Yeah. 
And we know though that she was instrumental yep. in spreading the truth. We also know narrations tell us that when the uh, family of the Holy Household returned back yeah. to Medina, mm -hmm. Uh, narration tell us that she was holding the son of the young infant son of Hazrat Abbas yeah. and when she gets told that her sons have become shaheed she drops the baby to yeah. the ground and she says but tell me of Hussein yeah. where was my Abbas was my Abbas not protecting Hussein yeah. and they say yes Hus uh, your son Abbas had his arms chopped off yeah. And she, all the time she kept on asking, where was my, where yeah. is Abbas, what's happened to Hussein? Hussein, Imam Hussein was more, she loved him more. Yeah. To her, he was more dear than her own yeah. children. Yeah. And that again just shows the loyalty and the love that she had for the Holy Household. And, and we know that she has said that, you know, if I could give up anything in this world, if I could give up all my children just to spare Hussein. Yeah. And that just shows how brave and a courageous woman she was. Absolutely. You know, this reminds me of whenever we say that Imam Zaman has a greater right upon us than our own family, our own parents, yes. our own selves. And this, this example of Umar Benin particularly, I think is such a black and white, obvious example mm -hmm. of someone who understood that she had a far greater responsibility to her imam than she did to her own children yes. or herself or anyone else. Um, right from day one, from, from the day she got married, but this incident that you were telling me about, you know, when, when the family of Imam Hussein come back to Medina and I think the, the poet Bishr is in front of them, so she hasn't seen the family yet, but Bishr is announcing mm -hmm. and he says to her, may Allah reward you for the death of your son Ja'far and Abdullah and Uthman. And then when, she, when, when he mentions Abbas, she drops the baby and she says, every time she's asking between what about Mahmoud Hussain, what about Mahmoud Hussain. And this mo like these moments that we're talking about are really the pinnacle yes. of proof that her responsibility to her imam was the foremost thing in her mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't something secondary. It wasn't something... Um, on the side where she thought, well, I'll sort myself out first, I'll sort my family out first, and then I'll think about the imam of my time. It was completely the other way around. Her imam dictated everything about her life. Her yes. imam dictated everything about her bringing up her children. And this is such a massive lesson to all mothers who love the Ahlul Bayt, anyone who wants their children to be in the path of the Ahl Bayt, Umul Benin is the perfect role model. Yeah, and everything ultimately that we do is yeah. for the, I mean, and, and this is something that I make as a niyat in my life, so everything that I do is as, you know, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but as a gift to our Ahl al Bayt, because ultimately these are, these are our role models yeah. who we strive to be. And Bibi Umul Benin is a perfect example of her love, of her of her courage, her strength, yeah. her loyalty, and even after she found out about the shahadat of Imam Hussein and the shahadat of her, her sons, she was instrumental, just like Sayyidah Zainab, just like Sayyidah Umm Qulthum, she was instrumental in spreading the truth. Mm -hmm. She was one of those first ladies who wrote poems who wrote lamentations yeah. about Imam Hussein. And in fact, narration tell us that she would go to uh, Janat al-Baqi with the young son, the young infant of Hazrat Abbas. Yeah. And she would wail and she would weep and she would say, do all these lamentations and these beautiful poems, yeah. so much so that the people of Medina would stop. And in fact, narration tell us that often the disbelievers would would end, would, would stop there in, in, uh, in shock yeah. or, or whatever you want to call it, but they were also taken aback by her lamentations, her grief, her mm -hmm. sadness, her crying, mm -hmm. that she felt the, the, the loss and the sorrow of the death of yeah. her beloved Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So yeah. this is just something that we can, a, a huge lesson that we can implement in our lives yeah. as to how every grief, every 
Every pain that the Ahlul Bayt feel, we should feel that. Yeah. In their times of sadness, we should feel sad. Absolutely. And in their times of happiness, we should feel happiness. And this is why in, in these times, in, in the Shahadat of Bibi Ummul Baneen, alayhi salam, we feel pain. We feel pain that, you know, on, on her martyrdom, but we also reflect on the personality that she was, on the sons that she brought up, and the lessons that we can yeah. learn from her life. Absolutely. We've mentioned like a few lessons here and there that we can take from her life, but if we go into a little bit more depth, you know, she she gave up so much. She lived such a specific lifestyle, um, quite a distinct one. What lessons can we take from her um, that we can really apply to our lives? Because it's really easy to look back at these personalities' lives and say, well, that thing that they did was really amazing and this was really amazing, but how can I take something from that myself? What can I do to be a bit more like them? You know, something that stands out in my mind of Bibi Umul Banin is um, she came into the household as um, a wife to Imam Ali alayhi salam. There is nobody like Sayyidah Fatima salam alayhi alayha. There is no love greater than the love that we see between yeah. Imam Ali alayhi salam and Sayyidah Fatima yeah. salam alayhi alayha. And everyone knows that. She knew that as yeah. well. She came into the household as a servant of Sayyidah Fatima. She came into the house as a, as a, as a, as a, as a next wife yeah. of Imam Ali. And she came into a household that was already established. The children were already there. Yeah. Um, and Sayyidah Fatima Salamu Alaihi Alaihi, although not physically present, was very much present in their lives. Absolutely. Um, and I think it's a lesson for us all as women, maybe as young, the young generation, you know, when marriage does take place, we need to realize the responsibilities that we have yeah. and realize who we are, not just as people, but realize that, yes, say that, you know, Bibi Umul Banin came into the house as the yeah. wife of Imam Ali, but she came into the house as somebody under, say the Fatima Salamu Allahi Alayha. Yeah. She never went above and beyond. Yeah. She never showed. She, she could have easily there was been never proud. Any ego, was there? It was there never was about never her. Ego. She could have if she wanted to. Because remember, you, uh, she's come into the holy household and Imam Ali w had. Had, seek, ha, had gone to seek knowledge from his brother Akil as to who to choose. So yeah. she was coming, she came in as a very specific yeah. member, but there was never any ego, there was no. never any pride. She was always very humble. Which is, which is not strange, but given that she came from such a well-known tribe, yes. such an established tribe, a tribe known for their bravery and courage, mm -hmm. it would have been very easy for her to come yes, in, definitely. you know, like a royal, Yes. I've come from this great tribe, yes. Yes. look after me, kind yes. of thing. Exactly. Um, but actually, like you said, she came in with such humility yes. and she knew what her role was from day one. Mm -hmm. um, there was no doubt about that. There, she did not need to be told. Um, and looking at you know, the situations that we often face in our communities, mm -hmm. in our society, how important is it that we have our intentions set before we enter a marriage or we know our roles before we enter a marriage or as soon as we enter a marriage. Mm. I feel the society that we, you know, if we, if we look at marriage from a non-Islamic point of view, yes. and if we look at it from a secular society kind of place, it seems all the relationships that take place are very egocentric. So, you know, I, what am I getting from this marriage? What am I getting from this relationship? Often if you, if you read online and you look at the things people post about, mm. oh, my partner's doing this, my partner's doing mm. that, the number one line is, well, what are you getting out of this relationship? If you're not getting anything out of it, then you should leave. And that's quite contrary to, I mean, completely contrary to what Umar Benin had yeah. because her, she, it was nothing to do with what she was getting. It was all about, what can I do to serve this household? What can I do to serve the Imam of my time? Um, 
but if we kind of make it relevant mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. us now, how you know how can specifically with our relationships, what can we learn from Umul Benin, and how can we make our relationships a little bit more fruitful that way? Yeah. I think the first thing that we need to look at is her jihad. Bibi Umul Benin, okay, was not present on Karbala, uh, the, on the day of Ashura in Karbala. But her jihad was being back in Medina. Her jihad was that specific role. We look at her jihad as coming in, uh, into the holy household, as, uh, as a second wife, as, a, as, as a, the other wife. That was also a jihad in itself, where she, she knew that she's coming into this holy household, but her ultimate goal was respect and loyalty. And I think it's sometimes perhaps the generations that we live in, perhaps the younger generation, we look at what we can gain in terms of materialistic gain. Okay, um, what, how do I look today? What do I have? How much money do I have? Do I have that car? Not looking at the gains for the future, not looking at what you can gain for Akhirah, for your life after, which is the eternal life. So her outlook on life, her mindset was, what is my Akhirah going to look like? What can I gain in the next life? This life is very transient. We're here today, we're gone tomorrow. And she knew that her main responsibility was for her to serve in the holy household and for her akhira. Mm. And she showed that from day one when she entered the holy household, she changed her name. She was a servant of Sayyidah Fatima. Her children were raised to be servants of Imam Hussein. Mm. She gave up her four sons. They became shaheed. She never once cried for them and she never once. She, of course she was a mother, she yeah. would have wept for her own children, but yeah. she wept for Imam Hussein first. She asked about Imam Hussein first. Yeah. Even after when she lamented and she wrote those poems and narrated those poems, she, the, her main uh, majority of her poems are around Imam Hussein and the tragedy that befell upon yeah. him. So there are so many lessons of jihad that we can learn from Bibi Ummul Bani. Mm. You know, we are told that the jihad that takes place on the battlefield is often referred to as the Small lesser, jihad, the yeah. smaller jihad. And the jihad of the nafs, yeah. the jihad of the soul, the jihad of one's inner conscience, inner voice is the greater jihad. Yeah. And she was the perfect example of that inner jihad. She was strong in her own merit, she was strong in her own ways, and she is a role model to us all in her own way. She sacrificed everything that yeah. she had for Islam, for the Ahlul Bayt, before Ashura and after Ashura as well. And she was instrumental in spreading that message yeah. of Imam Hussein afterwards as well. And that in itself is a jihad as well, to the point where even the disbelievers would come and stop and, and stand in gaze as to who is this woman? Who, why is she lamenting yeah. so much? The people of Medina were crying around her. Absolutely. You know, there's so many lessons to gain from yes. Benina. We've mentioned, you know, about what relationship lessons, for example, we can take from her. And, you know, when we're bringing up our children, I think there's a lot to be learned here. Um, I know we've mentioned a couple of times now that she kind of drummed in this servitude to to the Imams um, into her four sons. And again, you know, one of the consistent things that we see with Umar Benin is with whatever relationship we have, whether it was with Mama Ali alayhi salam, whether it was with her own children, her intention was always firm and very obvious from the onset. So with Mam Ali, for example, she knew that this this is my Imam first yes. before he is my husband. Um, same with Mam Hassan and Hussein, she knew these are the Imams. They are, you know, before before I am their, you know, mother or stepmother, these are my Imams that I serve, not the children that I just look after. Mm-hmm. And with her own sons, from probably before she even conceived any of them, it seemed as though she had this intention set in stone that 
everything I do is for the service of this household. So all her four sons, they were just brought up knowing that we have no other purpose other than to serve the Imam. And again, you know, the climate that we live in, the society that we live in, all the pressures and all the different factors that play into our mindset, sometimes I feel clouds our intentions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, first of all, we need to ask ourselves, do we even have an, you know, have I made an intention before having this child? Have I made an intention before embarking into this marriage? Yes. Um, and those of us who are married and do or don't have children, the number one thing to learn from Mul Benin is to have this intention of dedicating these children to the Ahlul Bayt mm -hmm. Without the intention, the action just won't follow yeah. through. And I think that yeah. you can probably agree with that. I mean, servitude is the biggest lesson that we learn yeah. from what we know and the life of Bibi Umar Benin. Servitude completely, 100% yourself and your children for the Imam of your time. And the Imam of her time was Imam Ali, then there was Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So servitude to her Imam. And it's something so important that we need to teach our children yeah. serving the Imam of our time. Yeah. Imam Mahdi alayhi salam who is our Imam, who we long for his reappearance and inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hastens his reappearance, we pray. But it's something so important that we treat, teach our children. And, and it's something that I try and instill in the daily lives of my children as well. Serving the Imam of your time. How can you please your Imam? What can you do that will help you in this life and your Akhirah as well? And knowing that your purpose on this earth is for a reason. Yeah. Your life, you have been blessed with this life because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utilize your time that you have the short, ultimately we have very short on a yeah. short time on this earth we never know when our time is up covid has shown that yeah. very precisely to us all and perhaps a wake-up call for us all that our life yeah. is very short whilst we have time and whilst we have the blessing of of health yeah. a youth and life use that time to serve the ahlul bayt and particularly the Imam of our time. Absolutely. So one of the other aspects of Umul Benin's life that we learn about is that she was one of the first individuals to establish the majalis mm -hmm. of Imam Hussein and to um, facilitate the mourning of the believers for Imam Hussein yes. alayhi salam. Yes. And, you know, now when we look around us, particularly living in London, there's no shortage of majalis, you yeah. know, it's so easily accessible. Alhamdulillah, we have all these opportunities to attend. But back then, you know, she was obviously one of the first people to do this. How, you know, you're so busy mourning. You've mm. been through so much yourself. You've lost four sons of your own and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of willpower yes. to then go and do something like this, mm. set up majalis for other people mm. and to spread the message of Imam Hussein this way. Mm. And, you know, we said this about all the ladies, ladies of the Ahlul Bayt where they had been through so much already and they had been through an amount of trauma mm. that for any of us would be enough to say, right, that's me done, I'm clocking out now, I've had yeah. enough, yeah. I can't go on anymore. But those moments were exactly the moments where they really, really stepped up and they shone. And Umul Benin did the same. She's been through all this. She has lost five sons, you could say. Um, she's mourning. She has this infant to look mm -hmm. after as well. And at that point, she says, okay, now I'm going to set up these majalis yeah. for Imam Hussein. Um, what does that tell us about her? I mean, it just speaks volumes yeah. about who she was as a person. And also, a thought that came to my mind was her main purpose was to mourn yeah. Imam Hussein, to let people know at the time what happened, the truth behind the events of Karbala, what actually happened yeah. to Imam Hussein and the Holy Household. And it just shows how important it is for us to hold majalises and to have majalises yeah. in our lives, for us, for our children, yeah. for the next generation. And, you know, Zahira, we know that there is no pain greater than the pain that you feel for the holy household. We pray that we are always blessed in servitude to the holy imams. Yeah. 
And we pray that we are always given the opportunity to cry over Imam. Because remember, that is a huge blessing that we often take for granted to hold majalises in our homes, in our centers. To bring our children to majalis is a huge blessing. Yeah. And often we take this for granted. And, and something else that strikes me is, I don't know whether you've ever felt this, but if you are ever going through a trial or a test in your life, yeah. and you remember the pain of Imam Hussein, yeah. the pain of Sayyidah Zainab, the pain of Sayyidah Umm Qutum, the pain that Sayyidah, yeah. that Bibi Umm al Banin must have felt, mm. your pain dampens. Yeah. Absolutely. You feel better because there is no pain greater than the pain and the, the tragedies yeah. that befell upon our whole, the, yeah. the Holy Household, the Ahlul Bayt. And so when you remember their pain, when you remember their grief, when you cry for them, and this is why it's so important for us to commemorate these big, huge shahadat and to let our children know about it because if you feel their pain, it just puts into perspective what you're going through in your life. And what we go through in our life is nothing compared to what the Holy Household went through. So perhaps Bibi Umm al -Banin, yes, she had so much love and loyalty for the Holy Household, but in her grief yeah. that she felt for Imam Hussein, yeah. The loss of her sons was put into perspective Absolutely. because ultimately her sons compared to Imam Hussein were underneath them. Absolutely. And so she realized that, okay, yes, as a mother, I grieve my children, mm. the grief, the, the, the loss of my children, but there is no pain greater than the struggle that yeah. the holy household went through. And so we learn from her that she mourned Imam Hussein first. And in, in the same way, we should mourn the loss of Imam Hussein, the tragedies that fell upon the Holy Household. And in that way, we can put into perspective the trials that we go through on a daily basis and, and remember the pain that they went through. And that will ho hopefully help us in our test because we know at the end of the day, فَإِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says that with hardship, there is ease. Yeah. And nothing in this world is greater than the test that Imam Hussein went Definitely. through. So if we put that into perspective, inshallah, we can always be of servitude to yeah. our holy Imam and mm -hmm. learn from the great personalities such as Bibi Umm al-Banin I think we have, we have a hadith from Mama Radha alayhi salam where he says, if you want to cry over anything, cry over Imam Hussein. Yes. And this is, it's so amazing because like you said, if if there's anything that I genuinely want to cry over in life, mm. remembering Mam Hussein or any of the people that were present in Karbala and what they went through, like you said, it just puts it into perspective. And it's it's not that we we're not going through anything; we are. But in the grand scheme of things, it really, really makes you think that if Imam Hussein had the strength, if Sayyid Zainab had the strength, if Umm Kulthum had the strength, there is some good in all the suffering that we go through, yes. right? Yes. Um, like say the Zainab said, she saw nothing but beauty. Exactly. So if we put that into perspective of what we are going through, yeah. we are going through perhaps the trials or the tests that we go through because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the strength that we have also, that we as individuals, sometimes we doubt yeah. how much we can, we can cope yeah. with. But actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, so He's the best of planners, He knows what we can cope with and he will not give us anything greater than the test that we can go through Absolutely. and so we take that into our lives we look at the holy personalities and we pray that there is no pain greater than the pain that we feel for the loss of imam hussein alayhi salam in the holy household definitely one of the other things i just thought i'd mention i i think you you mentioned something about taking majalis for granted mm -hmm. And I think the last two years yes. of COVID yes. have really, really turned the lights yes. on for a lot yes, of us. Yeah. Um, particularly if you live in a country where it's really accessible. You know, a lot of people unfortunately live in countries where they are not allowed to attend yeah. majalis. Yes. They are not allowed to organize majalis. Yes. Um, or they just live in a really secluded mm. area where there are no majalis. And we, alhamdulillah, we live somewhere where, you know, pre-COVID, there were, there were majalis everywhere. We had so but much. Now, as we are seeing, you know, th centers are opening up, and majalis is taking place. But yeah. there is no excuse, really, because no. we have abundance 
of online lectures yeah. and there is no excuse for not being able to tell your children that today is the shahadat of Bibi Umm al -Bani. Absolutely. and who she was, what a great personality yeah. what she is and how we can strive to be like her, follow in her footsteps. And something that I mentioned before is the amal of Bibi yes, Umm al-Bani. please share. Something uh, is so, so simple. You know, you, you, you start with the salwat, you have, um, actually I will look this up properly. So if our viewers want to know more about this amal, um, we can give this amal to them on a later episode that sure. we will have. But it's a very, very strong amal that can help you through the greatest and the difficultest of times because of the position that Bibi Umm al had in the Absolutely. eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the servitude that she had to the holy household. Definitely. Thank you so much Sayyida, that was really, really insightful and so inspirational. Um, dear viewers, we have come to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope that you found this episode as beneficial as I did. May we all learn um, from the lessons and the life of Umm al alayhi salam and implement these into our own lives and serve the Imam of our time the way she served the, Im the three Imams that she lived through as well. Um, inshallah, we'll see you in the next episode. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.